travel the world and we feel more at home in other places around the globe. And I mean, we always feel home in our homelands and when we're with our family and our, on our country. But when you move around the cities of Australia and you still can't get a cab or you're not allowed in a venue and, and it's, um, yeah, to me it's just like so behind the time sometimes. As a group of people are more accepted musically overseas than we are in our country in a way and I, I think I brought up something about the context of owning an indigenous record label in Queensland and just seeing the struggle of trying to produce indigenous music and you know there's no market for it, it's, it's weird, it's sort of like labelled as protest music or are they just making music for themselves? Like said, oh, why? Why do you think? Why do you think in Australia it's just not, you know? And what I, what I, when I had a good think about it, the answer that I probably should have give, given him was, in Australia they want the romanticised version. They love the, the idea of the nomadic, you know, the, um, uh, the, savage, um, you know, uh, sort of or traditional. They're going to be like real traditional. And if it's not that, then it's, ah, oh, it's all right. But we're an evolving people. We've evolved with everybody else. Just as much as we've got the 60,000 year old culture and links to it and all know bits and pieces of language or some people know all the language, have been through all the ceremony. relevant today up until now so that sits side by side we live in two worlds but it seems like you know Australia will only really box one of boxes into this stereotype of oh, it's just going to be this whereas you know black armband can tour around the world doing contemporary music with Aboriginal languages and go around the world and rip it up As much as it is an outlet for us, as Indigenous people and non-Indigenous artists, and Indigenous and non-Indigenous people come together, it's it's the act. It's not like oh, sit around and talk about this fluffy reconciliation. It's like it's that that's the practice of reconciliation. It's not talking it. We're just 
walking it together and just doing it, doing it, performing it. And that's where I think it hits people in the heart every time after after a gig anywhere. Wouldn't we we'll do two, maybe two or three songs in English at an hour, 15 minute show. And that's nine minutes, you know, of, of a set. And people come up to, I don't understand almost everything that you said we didn't understand, but we felt it, you know, we felt it here and um, they really appreciate it. growing up, you know, when I was growing up in Sydney and they go, oh, but you're not like the others. Well, who's the others? I mean, I was adopted by white people, of course I'm going to, you know, be white in my thinking, in my mannerisms, and it wasn't my fault. But I never forget that being told, oh, you're not like the rest of them. I mean, I go into the deepest of, you know, remote communities in the top end of Australia and remote, you know, Western Australia, Anang or to Yorong or country, and they're the most beautiful, wonderful, sharing people I've ever met. Literally, um, you know, give you the one shirt that they've got off their back to you. And so, yeah, Australia's missing out on some really amazing people that they could be hanging out with and understanding. Um, and be being proud of us and our traditions and our culture. Personally, it's just about legacy. I just think legacy. What what are my kids going to learn? Are they going to be able to learn their lingo? Are they going to know who their mobs are? Legacy. I always think about legacy. And how? What's? What are we leaving behind for the next generation? And how is it going to empower them? Not just be a Facebook status. You know? Yeah. finding it at a lot of the concerts I'm doing now around Australia. It is the baby boomers and the elderly, older people that are really changing their way and you know and they're bringing their and young mothers with their children so there is a definite you can see a shift. It is slow but there is a movement and 
you know. And this is what the black armband I think represents is that, you know, if we're sharing our songs and stories all around the globe, you know, and we do it at home and more people are in listening to our songs and our stories, the better understanding, the less ignorance that people will have, better education. <laughs> surprised when they visit an Aboriginal community like wow it's nothing like I thought it was gonna be yeah that's right because we just we share we're caring sharing people you know when European people first came how did they know where all the water holes were all the what to what plants not to eat everything we took them around everywhere we've always been like that just a generous kind people If we're both listening to each other and understanding a bit more of each other's story, and that's me understanding about you know someone's family history and how important it is to them, or you know them mob farmers and understanding their struggles, that's the only way to move forward in Australia. Hey, whoa.